Hello, and welcome back to What's That with Prisma Cloud. The show that breaks down complex cloud security topics into easy to understand concepts. I'm Tohar, and in this episode, we'll be talking about software composition analysis, also known as SEA, or sometimes open source security, repository scanning, or vulnerability scanning. As a Prisma Cloud product manager, I've been working on SEA for quite some time and have become intimately familiar with the challenges and opportunities. In this episode, I'll cover why SEA exists and the role it plays in keeping open source software secure. Let's start from a quick definition. Simply put, SEA is the automated application security process of analyzing open source packages with some code base and typically used to identify known vulnerabilities and license compliance issues. SEA has been around for decades, but with the rise of cloud native development and open source software, the need for it is greater than ever. First, to understand why software composition analysis exists, we need to understand how applications are built today, or analyzing the composition of the software. Gone are the days of building applications from scratch. With the rise of open source software, it's easier and faster than ever to build application with the code that already exists. So instead of reinventing the real, why not leverage what's already out there and write custom code to stitch everything together? It's estimated that applications are built of an average of 70% of open source software. For developers building new applications or features, that represents a huge lag up in terms of cost, time, and quality. It also means that a lot of what applications depend on comes from external third-party sources. As you can probably guess, open source isn't all upside. So some major challenges when it comes to finding the right code to solve your needs, how well is this code maintained, and of course, how secure and compliant it is. The number one thing to keep in mind with anything that comes from outside of your organization is that is not by default secure. A vulnerability is a flaw that can compromise or create risk in a code base. There are two types of vulnerabilities, known and unknown. When a security researcher finds an unknown vulnerability, they'll ideally responsibly submit it to a common vulnerabilities and exposures or CVE database, such as the National Vulnerability Database, also known as NVD. Here, it becomes a known vulnerability or CVE. Each CVE is given a score out of 10, measured using the Common Vulnerability Scoring System, or CVSS, to indicate how easy they are to exploit. Here's an example. One of the most recent high-profile vulnerabilities is Log4Shell. This is a vulnerability in a popular Java login package that allowed attackers the ability to inject code, and it fairly easily received a CVSS score of 10 Hindbleed, which was the first vulnerability to have the honor of receiving its own logo in 2014, received a CVSS of 7.5. There are immeasurable unknown vulnerabilities, also known as zero-day vulnerabilities, being uncovered every day. So how are you supposed to keep track of all those vulnerabilities? That's where SCA comes in. Leveraging CVE databases to keep track of it and identify vulnerability within your code base. It sounds simple until you start to dig into the complexity of the world of open source. Let's take a close look at some key components of core open source software. Open source packages are building blocks of open source software there are pieces of code that have been built in open source to serve the distant purpose. One of the most widely used open source packages is called Lodash. It's a JavaScript library that takes the hustle out of working with arrays, numbers, string, and so on. You can imagine how useful that would be for virtually any JavaScript app. Next, you need the package managers to make sure the right version of those open source packages are being used along with the package registry for these packages to live in. As technology evolves, packages, at least the maintained ones, get updated. Developers then need a way to make sure they're using the most up-to-date versions and programmatically importing them. 
It's important to understand the relationships between open source packages, also known as dependencies. If your software relies on an open source package, that is a dependency. If an open source package relies on another open source package, that's also a dependency. Going back to Lodash, so over 150,000 other open source packages that depend on that package. And those are just direct dependencies. Those dependencies also have other dependencies, which means Lodash has lots of other indirect transitive dependencies that you might not even know about. The Kubernetes code base, for example, has 118 direct dependencies and 122 indirect dependencies. SEA aims to keep track of vulnerabilities that are associated with those dependencies of open source packages that live in package registries that are managed by our open source packages. Let's recap what we've learned in this episode of What's That? Software composition analysis provides organization and developers greater insights into their code by identifying known vulnerabilities and license compliance issues. Open source software is great when it comes to building applications fast, but also presents some really big challenges when it comes to security. Known vulnerabilities, also known as CVEs, are weaknesses that can compromise or create risk within the code base. To help surface vulnerabilities, software composition analysis is here to help. SEA keeps track of vulnerabilities throughout all key components of open source packages, including any and all dependencies. As you can see, cloud native applications development using open source building blocks is a great way to get things done quickly and effectively. However, proper security steps need to be taken to identify and address any vulnerabilities. Stay tuned for part two of this episode, where we can take a close look of use cases of SEA and how it complements the other cloud native security solutions. I'm Tohar, and this is What's That with Prisma Cloud. See you soon.